Thank you so much to all of you for being here to hear about the AI session today at the innovation uh, event. Choices, choices, choices. There are so many choices, right? And how many of you here like choices? I, for one, love choices, but the key thing is choices can be a boon and a bane, especially when I'm trying to define these self-managed, self-defined um, uh, pipelines. What choices do I make? It is going to define, it's not about the choices we make, how do we make sure that the end results are productive and that my journey is much more meaningful. That's what defines it. And if you look at AI, be it at frameworks level, be it at uh, middleware, be it at uh, languages, be it whatever, there are so many choices. In the end, how is Intel helping actually these developers to get meaningful results so that their AI deployment is seamless is going to be the key. So not just do we have choices in the tools and languages and all of that stuff, but even AI itself, there are multiple uh, uh, you know, modalities. When you are developing an AI application, do I just go directly solve my problems with deep learning? When do I need to infuse traditional machine learning? How about probabilistic methods? So if you really look at world apl uh, applications in the world, they do fall at the modalities of two or three of these uh, uh, you know, uh, methods. So to get meaningful business outcomes, developers need to infuse sometimes deep learning with traditional ML or sometimes mix it with probabilistic methods to make sure we are getting meaningful results. And once you have identified the problem and we have figured out I wanna use say deep learning or probabilistic methods or whatever the uh, 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 methods are to actually get meaningful results, but AI itself is a heterogeneous process and it is a complex process and a continuous process. I need to collect the data, I need to curate the data, I need to uh, annotate the data, and once I have the data, I need to train it, then I need to deploy it, and once I have deployed, I have to figure out, is my predictions close to what I trained to? Is there a drift? If there is a drift, do I need to retrain? So it's a continuous iterative process. And guess what, most of the time the developers do spend in actually the first half of this where you are collecting the data and curating the data and annotating the data and making sure that your data is uh, clean because garbage in, garbage out. And you did hear Andrew Ng this morning that it's getting to a data-centric AI where the world is figuring out what do I get, what meaningful data do I need to get to get meaningful results. And not just that, once you have your predictive data, can I go deploy it blindly? How about the prescriptive methods? Do I need a human in the loop? Do I need to take care of any biases in the system? Do I need any governance around it? All this is also go uh, going to define how successful you are able to deploy your AI solutions. And as a data scientist, most of us actually spend time in not the most important data science work, rather most of our time is spent in making sure we are config configuring the hardware platforms, how do I do the resource orchestration, et cetera, which is not the fun part. We do want customers to focus, uh, developers to focus more on models, insights, and production and innovations and not focus so much on the rest of the stuff. So how does Intel help developers focus on what is innovative and increases their productivity while we make sure it is seamless for them to deploy AI. At a high level, we have uh, Converge Ops, Converge.io, which is an MLOps platform built for data scientists by data scientists. So the entire heterogeneous continuous loop that you saw, Converge.io makes it seamless for the developers and the data scientists. We have analytics, Intel AI analytics toolkit that accelerates end-to-end -end machine learning, deep learning, and the data analytics pipeline so that the customer gets the best optimized performance out of the Intel architectures. Because all said and done, we all know that AI is a software problem first. People who are coding for AI could care less about what architecture is underneath it. They even don't want to know what the architecture underneath it is. We want to code at high level languages, productivity is the key for us, and we want to make sure we get the performance out of the box while my productivity is not dampened. 
That is the key. And that's what we are trying to make sure at Intel, we are providing those tools and solutions so that the development to deployment time is easy while you are getting meaningful performance out of the box. For core Python, we have optimized for NumPy, SciPy, Numba, and others. For DL, we have Intel extensions for ten TensorFlow, PyTorch, and we have also all the model optimization tool chains that are available. In fact, 1DNN is automatically uploaded into TensorFlow 2.9, so the customers don't even, or the developers don't even realize that they're getting the benefits of the optimizations right out of the box. And for ML, uh, we have extensions like scikit-learn and optimizations for XGBoost, and for data analytics, we have distribution of Modin. So while we are focusing on all of these things, the key thing we want to make sure is our developers are getting the productivity right of the box. So with that, I would like to invite, uh, and before I invite uh, uh, Dr. Vasudev, this is one of the customer testimonials from software engineer at Shotgun, where they said it only took one month for them to deliver AI results because the solution, the Converge.io solutions we provided was intuitive, centralized, and simple to use. It's all about simplicity, it's all about ease of use. That's all there is to AI.